Hey, what's up guys? I'm Zach. And I'm Marquez. And we just wanted to this time before we start this video just to say thank you to all essential workers that have been working during this crazy time. All doctors, nurses, first responders, restaurant workers, store workers, janitors, just anybody who's been working during this pandemic. We just want to say a big thank you to you. And we also just want to say that just because some states like Texas, like the one we live in, and a few other states are starting to reopen some businesses, uh, just be safe out there. Um, coronavirus hasn't gone away. It hasn't disappeared and there's still no vaccine for it. So if you have to go out, just make sure that you absolutely have to and that uh, you stay safe while doing so. You wear ma your mask and you practice social distancing. All right, now on to the video. Hey everyone, thank you so much for clicking on this video. We will be going over our uh, 50, 50 through, through 41. 50, 50 through 51. <laughs> <laughs> There's just two today. Yeah, 50 through 41. Where are we going at 50 through we're 41? finally over halfway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, that, that, so that's good. And we're going to be going over that. If you are interested at all in watching our previous ones from this list, we'll put links in the description below. Maybe something going on up here, something like that, you know. Uh, so you can watch those. And if you are not interested in watching our other ones and you just want to go from here, uh, we will also put our list down in the description below. And here's just a list of our disclaimers just so we don't have to talk about them over again. For my honorable mention, I'm gonna go with Inside Out, which is a really great Pixar film that really delves into the mind of this child. They did uh, talk to people, psychiatrists, psychologists, just to understand what children have to go through and how their minds work a little bit. And my honorable mention is Megamind, and I kind of, debated on if I wanted to put this movie or the first Despicable Me uh, as my honorable mention because they're both kind of similar in concept and they both came out in the same year. But I really, I, I feel like this movie handled its silliness a little bit better. And just overall, it's a really fun, enjoyable movie. For my number 50, I'm gonna go with Toy Story 3. For a while, we thought it was gonna be the end of the trilogy. And it really, if it would have been, it would have been fine because it actually ended it very well. Uh, and this movie is really good overall. My number 50 is The Secret Life of Walter Mitty, which I feel like is one of the most underrated movies of this decade and also one of the best. I really love the message of just living in the moment instead of always daydreaming about uh, fantasies and just enjoying the moment you're in and loving life while you live it. My number 49 is gonna be Hacksaw Ridge and even though the director has had his past and I really don't like him, I do think this is a very intense movie and just really interesting to think about how this man lived through this war. My number 49 is Seven Psychopaths, and this is a really strange movie. I, I vividly remember going to see this in high school with my friend at the time, and just halfway through the movie, we, we just like looked at each other like, what the heck are we watching? Because it's a really over the top kind of movie about a guy who's trying to write a movie called Seven Psychopaths, and then just how his friend gets a little bit overly obsessed with helping him write it. My number 48 is gonna be The King's Speech, which is a really good movie that, it's, it's really cool because the, uh, I believe it was the writer uh, of this movie who had the same kind of speech impediment that the King had in this movie that really made him want to make this movie. And he actually heard the speech that this King gave. You can hear it on YouTube as well. And it's just really cool hearing the backstory about this and what this guy had to go through in order to just say this speech Properly. Not only that, but this movie has some really great scenes between uh, the king and his therapist. And then the director went on to make cats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For my number 48, I have The Lighthouse, and this is a movie that's shot with extremely old uh, equipment. They actually use cameras and equipment that was used in the time period that this movie set in. And it's a really interesting movie about two guys who are stranded, not really stranded, but they're both, what's the word? Not stranded. They're um, they're stuck together in this lighthouse on this island, and you really start to see them really kind of go crazy. For our number forty-seven, we both went with the Nightingale, and this movie is although really good. It's an extremely hard movie to watch. I really don't know if I could watch it again, but it's it it, cause it really gets into really brutal territory. And even though it's brutal, it's not brutal just to be brutal. It actually works with the film to actually make it more intriguing. Yeah, it, it's kind of like a, a Twelve Years a Slave, to where it's like it's it's so realistic and so brutal and doesn't shy away from 
the really brutal and gritty parts of history of like actual events. Mm. Even though this movie's not based on a true story, the actual things that happen, uh, that how people act and how people think were true to its time period. And one thing I love about this movie is even though, because this is a time whenever the racism was rampant, uh, obviously, right. you know, yeah. and one thing you, I love about this movie is a lot of times in movies when they have these main characters, they're like the only people in the movie who aren't racist. Yeah, just like conveniently. Yeah, <laughs> conveniently, right? Not racist. But in this movie, the main character, the hero of this movie is racist. Yeah, and you start to realize, you start to see like, her bonding with this guy mm -hmm. because they're go both going through hardships. Mm -hmm. And it actually makes it for a more intriguing story. My number 46 is going to be Gone Girl, which is an extremely irritating movie. I, I, I love this movie and I would watch it again. I want to show it to people, man. But this movie honestly drives me insane. And just the watching this movie, just the little things that they could do, the ideas that they came up with to piece this movie together to make it so hard for Ben Affleck's character to get out of the spotlight of people thinking that he murdered his wife and just how hard it was. And you're thinking to yourself, man, this is actually realistic. Like this could actually happen. You're like, man, has it ever happened before? Is there a person who is known for murdering their wife out there that actually didn't do it? And it may, makes you really think about those things and how creepy this situation could actually be. My number 46 is Veronica. And this is a movie on Netflix. I, th I think it's still on Netflix. It's an all subtitled movie. It's all in Spanish. Uh, and it's a really great horror movie. It's um, That's a really coming of age story, but it's not cliched. For my number 45, I cheated on this one just so I could fit more movies into this list. Uh, and also because I really think they're about equally the same. And that is the Mission Impossible trilogy that came out in this decade. Uh, I know it's not, a, I know the Mission Impossible isn't a trilogy, but the, the three that came out this de decade, Ghost Protocol, uh, Rogue Nation and Fallout. Uh, and to me, these movies are just some great action movies. If I'm being honest, I've never loved the James Bond movies, they've never really interested me. I really feel like it's because they try to take themselves too seriously. The reason why I love uh, Mission Impossible is because it's kind of the same concept of it's these ridiculous technology, except for the fact that they really don't take themselves so seriously. And that's what really makes me love these movies and makes them more fun to watch for me. My number 45 is Looper. And this movie has always had a warm spot in my heart because uh, it was the first rated R movie I saw in theaters once I turned 17 and I didn't even get carded, which kind of made me mad. But uh, it's a great movie. It's a really original movie. Uh, it builds this world uh, that's set in the near future and it builds it so extremely well. And it's a really interesting story of someone's future self uh, being hunted by their younger self. My number 44 is going to be Avengers Endgame, and a lot of people have their problems with this movie, but if I'm being honest, almost every issue that I heard people had about this movie, I actually did not have those issues at all, even though I do have some. And if you're interested in that, I do have we do have a video up about how why I don't agree with people's complaints about Avengers Endgame. We also have a video about why we don't agree with Ben Shapiro's review of her Endgame and stuff like that if, you want, if you're interested in watching those. But to me, this movie is just a great conclusion to this entire 10 year franchise. And it was just a great film overall. Sure, there was times where I had my very tiny issues, but really I could I overlooked those completely just because of how I thought this movie was so well written, even though maybe there are maybe there are some plot holes when it comes to the time travel, but to be honest, I really don't look at plot holes when it comes to time travel movies, because time travel movies are just so hard to make. I just felt like this one was really well put together. My number 44 is Jojo Rabbit, and this is a satire about the Nazis in World War II in general. And But it's done so cleverly that it doesn't feel distasteful. It's a movie that really shows just how racism can be ingrained into children's minds from a young age. For our number 43, we both chose Argo, which is a really cool movie. And one thing I love about this movie is the fact that a lot of stuff in this movie, the main portion that this movie this movie is talking about is trying to go for, doesn't really happen until I'm gonna say more than halfway through. But this movie does have a way of keeping you intrigued in it because it really just shows the tough process that these people went through to succeed with this mission. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting, especially for me and Marquez, because like it had to do with like them making a movie, mm -hmm. a fake movie. And the last like 30 minutes was like the most stressed I've been while watching a movie in a while. <laughs> for our number 42, we both have Ex Machina, and this is a really great movie about a scientist who uh, hires this young kid to, well, not like 
kid, but young, <laughs> like uh, he's probably like early twenties. Yeah, young older man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're trying to test this robot to see if it's actually can tell if it's a robot or how human they can actually make this uh, AI. And this movie is really interesting because it really does make you think about these things about, and it, it kind of talks about what is the test to make this. The end of this movie is what makes you realize how human this robot actually is. And also I just love the, I love movies like this, isolationism, movies like uh, The Lighthouse, right. where there's just two people, there's nobody around. So there is a creepy feeling in the back of your mind, like if anything happens, there's nobody can ever know about it. Right, which you just answered my question. We were trying to figure out the word is isolated. Oh, uh, <laughs> not stranded. For my number 41, I'm gonna go with This Is The End. And this honestly is the funniest movie I've ever, not the funniest movie, <laughs> one of at least. It's like, dang, didn't know you loved it that much. <laughs> Uh, it's up there though, yeah, honestly. Yeah, definitely. This movie just all the way through just is hilarious. And like Zach said earlier, this movie does get weirdly philosophical at times, but never really loses that comedy aspect. Even by the end, whenever it feels like it shouldn't be as funny anymore, it actually stays funny and it never really feels, the humor never feels out of place. My number 41 is Whiplash, which I just recently found out that it's a Blumhouse movie. <laughs> like all their movies are horror movies. I think it's like one of their only like non-horror movies. And it's like one of their best movies. Uh, it, it's a movie that really shows just how far someone will go to be the best at what they do. Uh, J.K. Simmons gives one of the best performances I've seen all decade. Well, there you go, guys. That is our 50 through 41. Uh, soon we'll be putting out our next 40, 40 through, the best 41, 31. 40 through 31 if you're interested in that. Like I said, if you want to watch our previous videos in this list, we'll have those in the description below. But like I said, if you really don't wanna start all the way at the beginning, you wanna start from here, we will have our entire list in the description down below. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We have, I said that weird. Dion. <laughs> and don't forget to follow us on social media. We have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. What the heck am I doing? All right. And don't forget to follow us on social media. We have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, all at Two Awesome Men. And as always, thank you so much for watching, and you will see us later.